Hi guys, Olive here. I am here today to do a nonfiction November review for you, but with a little bit of a twist. In today's video, I would like to review She Has Her Mother's Laugh, The Powers, Perversions, and Potential of Heredity by Carl Zimmer. And at the end of the video, I'm going to be revealing my own ancestry DNA results, so stay tuned. First things first, She Has Her Mother's Laugh was published in 2018 by Dutton, which is an imprint of Penguin, and the hardcover copy comes in at 656 pages. This is a book all about the human understanding of heredity and inheritance, and how it has changed over time alongside scientific discoveries. Zimmer begins with a brief discussion on what impressions of ancestry people have written down throughout recorded human history, of how people believed ancestry to work before we knew for sure, but then he very quickly moves into scientific breakthroughs of the 19th and 20th centuries. This, of course, includes Gregor Mendel, who basically founded the study of genetics and discovered the foundational rules of inheritance through his study of pea plants, which you may already know about if you, like me, took a biology course in school. But if you weren't the biggest science reader, have no fear, because this very big nonfiction book isn't solely focused on the science. In fact, it is also very focused on the social history of and evolving attitudes toward heredity. The more positive topics in the book focus on the historical and more modern attempts to try to find one's ancestors and discover where one came from. But this book also looks at the more insidious ways this subject has been used, or should we say exploited, through the study of eugenics, or an attempt to improve the human race by controlling who can reproduce. This is coupled with a discussion on whether or not intelligence is something that's able to be handed down to subsequent generations. And there's a whole deconstruction and takedown of the arguments made by supporters of eugenics using scientific studies, including studies done on identical twins as examples. But in the book, we also learn about how heredity has a big impact on our everyday lives. We learn through the example of author Pearl Buck's daughter, how certain diseases or disorders are heritable, how genetic testing can inform us what diseases or disorders we might be carriers of, and what health conditions we may be susceptible to because of our DNA. It's also now possible to have your own DNA lined up with your partner's DNA, if the two of you are considering having children, and seeing what possible diseases or disorders your child may be at risk for inheriting. As you can probably now tell because of the way this book discussion has gone. As the book goes along, we start to move into the modern age, and Zimmer discusses all the new advances in genetic science. This includes topics like genetic testing of embryos to be used in in vitro fertilization, gene correction, gene therapy. Basically, humans are getting involved in what genes are passed down to subsequent generations in a way that we've never been able to before. I found all of these topics extremely interesting, and although the author is a case Originally kind of long-winded. What really makes this book so bulky, remember it's over 650 pages long, is the fact that he also feels the need to discuss social inheritance and culture. He considers culture to be a type of inheritance and stresses that we are a part of our established cultures more so than they are a part of us. I can appreciate the ambition of including something like that since conceptually at least it is something inherited, but more often than not, I found that it detracted from the greater picture he was trying to paint about genetics. In in the actual reading of the book, it felt more like a loss of focus than it did an intentional effort to include other types of inheritance. Like at one point, he starts talking about climate change. And while I'm always down to discuss that and the impacts that it has, why is it in this book? But I did really enjoy this book. I loved all the science, and I thought that Zimmer's really well-written and well-researched stories that he used to illustrate his larger points made this book remarkably human. At first, I was a little bit impatient with the book since he started immediately with Mendel, and I know that information so well that I was kind of like, is this going to be an entire book of information that I already know pretty well? But I do understand that he had to start there because it's so important to have that knowledge as you make your way through the rest of this book. My favorite two sections in this book were number one, 
all the sections about the modern advances in genetic science, because regardless of whether or not you agree with those practices, it is absolutely incredible what technology is capable of these days. And my second favorite section was the one where he talked about the process of X inactivation, which I will just link the Wikipedia article for that down in the description box below. There is no way that I can describe it very effectively. And of course you can read the book if you want to learn more about it. This process was discovered by a woman, fittingly enough, and it's the reason that my cat looks like this. She's very grumpy, but she has the alleles for the black and orange coloration genes on each of her X chromosomes, don't you? She really hates being held, but I swear she's a sweet cat. But according to the Wikipedia article, for any given patch of fur, the inactivation of an X chromosome that carries one gene results in the fur color of the other active gene. That's what makes a tortoiseshell cat. But anyway, this is why tortoiseshell cats are almost exclusively female, because they need both of those X chromosomes. So if a tortoiseshell cat is ever male, he is very likely sterile, because he has two X chromosomes and one Y chromosome. So this book is absolutely fascinating. Although it is extremely long, I didn't think it was a slog to get through, although I did admittedly get impatient with the cultural sections. But overall, it is something I would definitely recommend. But now for the very exciting reveal of my genetic results that I got through Ancestry DNA. This is not a sponsored video. I used my own money. So the whole reason I decided to do this Ancestry DNA test is that I don't know a whole lot about my genetic background. I've heard different things from my family members, but of course you can never really know for sure. And so I thought I'd participate in the fun experiment that a lot of people are doing these days, which is how white am I really? I am quite obviously a very, very white person. In fact, it wouldn't entirely surprise me if these results turned up part jellyfish because I am translucent. So I know that most of these results are going to be from Europe. It's just where in Europe. So here are my results. Oh, interesting. Okay. So I am 52% from England, Wales, and Northwestern Europe, 28% from Germanic Europe, 8% from Norway, 4% from Sweden, 3% from the Baltic States, 3% from Ireland and Scotland, and 2% from Eastern Europe and Russia. I can finally tell people that yes, I do have some Russian ancestry. I am honestly surprised that this isn't showing that I'm more German or more Irish. I was under the impression that I had more ancestry from those regions, but I'm definitely not surprised that I'm so much from England, Wales, and Northwestern Europe. I know that on my maternal grandfather's side, there is a lot of French ancestry there, but I really did think there was more Irish going to be in here. Norway, Sweden, and the Baltic states, I have no idea what the story is there. I'd be really interested to know. But anyway, there you have it, a complete breakdown of my whiteness. And as I said before, I did do my test through Ancestry DNA. They send you one of these kits and a little tubi that you have to spit into for a prolonged period of time, and then you send it back to them. And as I also mentioned before, this is not a sponsored video. They did not reach out to me. I did not reach out to them. I paid for this entirely myself. However, if you want to receive a discount, they did give me, as someone who purchased the test, a referral code for anyone who wants to get a discount on their own test. So I will link that down in the description box below. So that ends today's nonfiction November review video of She Has Her Mother's Laugh. I would love to hear from you in the comments comment section below. Have you read it? Are you interested in reading it now that I've talked about it? Or if you have any more general comments or questions, you can also put those in the comments below. Or you can find me on a variety of different places on social media. And the links to all of my profiles are linked in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video. Bye.